Good morning everybody, it's Tracy D. Bartolo, Thermomix Consultant, coming to you from McLaren Vale. This morning I'm about to head out to lunch very shortly, but I thought before I went I would show you how to do one of my favourite things in the Thermomix. And honestly I think this is something that not too many people really give much thought to when I say to them that I make ice cream in my Thermomix. They all just look at me a little bit funny and say, no, it can't do that. So yes, it can, but it's completely different to an ice cream maker where the ice cream maker will freeze it for you. Basically what your Thermomix is doing is it's preparing all the ingredients ready for you to put into the freezer. And then once it's frozen, I'll be showing you what how you deal with it afterwards to make it into ice cream and then to store it. Okay, so if you go to Cookie Do, and I'm sure on any other recipe platform that you might use yourself, just type in ice cream Thermomix and you will see loads and loads and loads of different ice creams. So I've got a little folder that I save them into, so whenever I feel like making ice cream. Um, the ingredients do vary from recipe to recipe, but there is always some element of sugar in it, always some cream, that's probably one of the main things that's always in it, and then um, eggs of some description, whether it's egg yolks, a whole egg, or in some cases, egg white. So I'll we'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, so the one that I've chosen today is honey ice cream because I have a batch already in my freezer so I can show you how to churn it afterwards. So you'll see both the elements of it. Honey ice cream, just type that into cookie dough and then start cooking. The first thing it will want us to do is to get some sugar and we're going to, to mill it into icing sugar. Basically, that's all we're doing. Now, remember that when it comes to sugar, you're always in control. You know, you can put in the amount, as it says in the recipe, you can tweak it to your own liking. You can increase it, you can decrease it. There must, I think, be some element of sugar in ice cream, but it's totally up to you how much of that you want to, to have in your recipe. All right, so I am going to take my lid off and tear the scales and pop in. I've got 75 grams of white sugar for this recipe. Some of the recipes I use, they ask for car, um, raw sugar. So it's totally up to you. Press next. And what I've got to do, if you've ever milled in your Thermomix before, you know that you get this beautiful plume of uh, sugar dust. So to try and keep things a little bit tidy, I just put a bit of paper towel on top and then pop your lid on. And it just helps to keep the um, icing sugar back down into the bowl. Putting on the lid and now it's 20 seconds on speed nine. Lovely, okay, so 20 seconds we've turned just normal everyday white sugar into pasta sugar. So just be mindful that when we take the lid off, there will be some of the smoke or dust, so just be very careful. I tend to use a, a little pastry brush, so a silicon pastry brush, or even just a normal pastry brush, but a good quality one so you don't lose the hairs and just give it a bit of a wipe around. I'll show you what the inside looks like for any of you who haven't milled sugar before. So there you go, I have icing sugar. Now another tip that I like to tell people is if you've got a recipe and you are required to mill some sugar, just check out your pantry to see how much icing sugar or caster sugar you've already got in your little containers. And I will often increase the amount so that I, I'm gonna do a batch, so then I will pop it into one of my containers and then just use the 75 grams or whatever it is that the recipe wants. Okay, and the other thing to remember when you are milling is you must have a really, really, really dry bowl and the blades. 
because if there's any bit of moisture, it just messes with the, the fineness, I think. Okay, so there's a couple of little hints for you. Get yourself one of these, helps you to, to scrape it down. Use a bit of paper towel on top and also make sure it's very dry. And plus do a double batch or a triple batch or whatever and then store some aside. So next time you need some icing sugar in a recipe, you can just quickly grab the icing sugar. You don't have to do it at the beginning of the recipe. Okay, next thing is two egg yolks. Who out there is really good at separating eggs? Not me, I am the worst. So I tend to use a, a proper little egg separator, which I then very carefully, I really am in awe of people who can just crack and you know get the egg white out and then plop the yolk in. All power to you people, but that is not me. So I have pre-done these. I like this recipe because it only uses two egg yolks. So I was having a quick look at my other ice cream recipes that I've got in my folder uh, on Cookie Doo, and I um, there's one that's just a vanilla ice cream that takes six egg yolks. So that's a lot of egg yolks, and that's why I like this one that only makes only needs two egg yolks. However, if you do use a lot of egg yolks and you're left with the whites. You all need to know that you can absolutely freeze it. So this is my two egg whites in this little container and I have just written on there two egg whites and the date and I will pop that in my freezer. So again, when you need something and you uh, it says egg whites, you don't have to then waste the yolks. And I, I feel that the whites freeze better than yolks. I haven't really successfully freezed yolks. They seem to come out a bit funny but the whites absolutely perfect so then you can go on gather them all together and make meringue for instance okay so that's going to go in my freezer later uh, now we're going to have the honey 65 grams of honey so this recipe with the honey it really does change depending on the honey that you use I'm not a big honey eater however I have quite taken a fancy to the honey ice cream and at the moment I'm using the Beechworth honey but you can get honey source it locally if you like I just particularly like this one it's quite mild and not overpowering kangaroo island in South Australia makes a beautiful honey but it is quite strong in flavor all right so 65 grams so we're just going to using our scales of course which is the absolute best I just love that you can squeeze it straight into the bowl. There we go. And next, and then 500 gram of whipping cream. Again, good quality cream is what's gonna make a good quality product at the other end. I live at McLaren Vale, so I'm very blessed to have the Flurio Milk Company in our area, and so I use their cream, which is just beautiful. So 500 in there. I think I'm going to go over a bit, oh, not by much, 510 maybe by the time I finish shaking. So that's perfect. Again, if, you want to, if you've got 600 grams to use up, use the 600. It's really not going to make that much of a difference. Okay, done. Next thing is just a little bit of natural vanilla essence. It says a teaspoon. That's about a teaspoon, up to you whether you use it, a teaspoon or not, or just estimate, and then a pinch of salt. If I'm ever using salt, which I, I do use it, but I try to be sparing with it, I try always to use a good quality sea salt. I figure if we're gonna have it, it might as well be good quality. All right, so what the instructions are telling me now is to put the lid on, insert the measuring cup and then it will be cooking for six minutes on 80 degrees on speed four i'm just going to pop to my machine here at the back and that's going to be cooking in the background while i go on and do the next step so if you're making ice cream at home after the six minutes is finished i'll show you how to put it into a prepared container but for now, I'm going to go to the next step, which 
basically, oh that's telling us to put it into a container, it says to clean and dry your bowl. I don't need to do that because I have a second bowl here, so if anybody out there um, is looking to buy Thermomix and uh, haven't done so yet, you have a few days left where you can actually get a second bowl. So you can always put a message on there if you are interested in that. Okay, clean and dry the bowl, which I've done. And the next thing it's telling me is to cut my already frozen ice cream. So that's what's cooking in the background now. I'm going to grab that out of the freezer. Okay, so here is my already prepared frozen ice cream from when I did a batch a couple of days ago. And that's just been sitting in the freezer waiting for me. Now, I have been making ice cream for quite some time and the trick is you need a shallow container so something shallow like this okay so it's and you also need to have the perfect spot in your freezer so it usually if you've got the drawers and you have that middle bit that's quite shallow that's the perfect spot where the air can circulate around it and it freezes quickly that is also another um, benefit if you if you can do it so have your spot already cleared and ready for you to put it in once you've made your ice cream the other thing is once it's in this container you've got to be able to lift it back out again in order to cut it up and put it in your bowl and at first I sort of struggled with that I tried all sorts of things I put baking paper on there I put our foil underneath it I put glad wrap underneath it and I always found it was very fiddly and then the other day it's like I had an epiphany and what I did was so here's another one of my containers I thought to myself one of those freezer bags that I've got in my drawer I think that's about the right size so open your freezer bag and just slip it in like so and then once that is finished cooking behind me, I'll show you how easy it is to pour in. And the sides stay there because it's all connected. Genius, right? It's the simple things that make you happy. Okay, so, and also to get it out, you just lift it up, pop your hand in, and then out comes the container from underneath it. Eventually. There we go. There's your container, and then onto a board, tip it over, and just peel that back. So simple. It's taken me about a year to work that out. So it's yours for free, how about that? Okay, so we're just gonna cut into rather large bits like that, just like you're cutting up a slab of, I don't know, a slice. Think of it like that, and we are going to, so there's even a little video on here. So if you do the honey ice cream recipe, when you get to this stage where it says cut the ice cream into pieces, four centimeters, press the little arrow and it plays a video for you. I mean, how amazing is that? It really is, it's all in one. Um, and then the next step is, it says to put in said ice cream pieces, which I am doing. I just use a, a knife to get it off the board. If there's any left on the board, you can just eat it. Just saying. Okay, so in that goes. Now, another thing that I have not yet done is I haven't doubled this recipe. So instead of using 500 of the cream, using a litre of cream, I honestly think that the initial cook so what we're doing now I'm sure that the bowl will take it and it will cook it it will it will be just fine but when you come to this still just do the 500 lot um, because the next thing we're going to do is put it on for 20 seconds we're going to be churning it on speed nine so here we go
Okay, so depending on how good your freezer is will depend on how much this churns in the first instance. I'm going to just take it off for you and I'm hoping you can see that some of it has started to become quite creamy and there is a little lump in there that's quite solid still. So what I'm going to do is just, oh, it's actually not too bad, there's really only one bit that is still a little bit solid. So this is very much a case of you just get your spatula in, feel how it is and decide how much more churning it needs in the next step. All right, so what you can do, again, there's another little video here, press the button and watch it. So it's telling us that at this next step, you can use your spatula in through the hole in the lid. So I'm sure everybody is aware that, that it's perfectly safe to do that because you've got the sleeve around here which stops it from touching the blades. All right, so another 10 seconds, this time just on speed four. And just use your spatula to make sure that it stays down and it's getting churned up. But just keep moving it. Lovely. Okay, let's have a look. Fantastic. So, this is pretty much the finished product. I will. So, there you go. It's lovely and creamy. And now you are going to put it into a container that's suitable for the freezer. These are my favorite things ever. So, these are from the mix shop called the ice cream containers. You can get them with a pink lid or you can get them with a green lid. And if you buy a pack of two, you get one of each lid. Then I just write on it. So I, I, I write that and then when it's finished, I just scrub it off. It comes off quite easily because of the silicon. All right, so I am going to pour in my ice cream. I can move this out of the way now using my slider board. Like so. Okay. Okay. So to get it into here without making too much of a mess, I use my jam funnel. And also another little thing that I do try and tell everybody when I'm doing my delivery is how to properly pour from the jug when, especially if you've got hot foods, but even though this is cold, it's still very, very heavy. So we can all see the shape of this, the handle. What we do is we automatically do this. However, the handle has been designed ergonomically. If we hold it like so, it is so much better for us when we're pouring. It puts a, a lot less strain on our shoulders and also our elbows because you tend to keep your elbow in. All right, so this is all going in. See how the jam funnel just makes it so much easier. I don't have to be careful at all. I can just keep funneling it in like so. And the next thing that again, some of you might already know this trick and you're probably already doing it yourself, but I like to sort of share whatever I can. If you've got things stuck around the blades like that so you can just see there what we can do have a taste test mm, nice pop it back into the machine I'll bring it back in again um, I'm going to finish this recipe but even if you are in the middle of a recipe and you want to hop out and do this halfway through a cook you can just use the three uh, dots uh, no actually that's wrong just press the little home key and it will bookmark it for you. All right, so I am going to put my lid back on, swipe over, and I'm going to find my turbo, which is there. And you'll notice as soon as you turbo, it locks into place, because that's a safety feature. One second is what is the default, and I'm gonna leave it at one second, and just turn the dial. <laughs> Now when you've done turbo, it will not unlock until you 
indicate to it that that's what you want it to do. And to do so, you just press the little home key to get back to your main screen. Or if you've bookmarked, you can just press the bookmark and it will take you back to your recipe. So just a couple of little things to make your life easy. And there you can see it's all completely off the blades now. So again, I can, I don't like to waste anything, you know. It's all about no waste here at Thermomix and in my kitchen. I try very hard not to throw too much away or to waste ingredients. Ingredients are way too expensive, aren't they? All right, so now how much, everybody, does it cost if you buy a litre of really beautiful gourmet, let's call it, ice cream? I mean, I don't know how much is a litre. I don't buy it, so that's really bad on my part. But I have seen it in the supermarkets for, um, you know, $7, probably bare minimum, and even more at times. So this makes basically the best part of a litre. And the ingredients, as you can see, are quite minimal. Half a litre of milk, of cream, and then a couple of egg yolks, a bit of sugar, a bit of honey, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so that is ready to go into my freezer. And now I will get our cooked ice cream. So when you're at home making this yourself, this is what you'll end up with. I'm trying very hard not to pour it out. Okay. So this is hot, it's been cooked at 80 degrees, and I'm going to get out my prepared container, so that was just that plastic bag, straight over there, move this out again, and now I'm just going to hold down here so it doesn't, um, doesn't lift up the plastic, and I'm just going to pour that out into there, like so. Super, super easy. And with the spatula, just get the last little bit out. This is easy to get out because it's very liquidy at this point. We've cooked the cream at 80 degrees, so it's just like liquid. And all we do now is we leave this for about 30 minutes just to cool off, and then we will be putting it into our freezer, into that little pre-prepared spot that we had ready. Leave it for, I leave it at least for overnight, but probably best to leave it for 24 hours, I find, in, in my experience. And then you get it out the freezer and we churn it like I showed you. And you end up with a beautiful litre of a gorgeous ice cream that's got no additives, no fillers, no stabilizers, anything like that. Pure cream, pure honey, two egg yolks, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of vanilla essence. So, and it is really, really scrumptious. So I challenge you, go to Cookie Do. Type in ice cream. Find out, oh, there is just so many ice creams that you can, you can look at and have an experiment. It is so, so easy. But the tips are to have some place in your freezer that you can freeze it flat like this. Use my method of a plastic bag, which took me about a year to work out. And then have something that you can put it into that this silicon lid seals really well and it doesn't, it's quite thick walled, so it, it means the ice cream doesn't get icy at all. Not that it lasts long enough because we eat it. This honey ice cream, killer vanilla, I also make, and um, even out of fruit. So one of our other favorite ones is, a ma is mango ice cream. Now, the mango ice cream on Cookie Do, you must make sure that you have un, um, undone your filters so that you can get into the USA recipes because the, uh, if you've got a mango and you think, oh, it's really not gonna get eaten, not gonna last, just quickly cut it up, pop it in a container, freeze it, and then the next day, continue on with your recipe. And it's sugar, the mango, cr and cream, and that's all it is. So it's, it's like a, um, yeah, just like a, a fruit smoothie, but then you freeze it, and it is the most beautiful ice cream. Okay, enough from me. Enjoy, it's summer here in Australia, finally. So please, make sure that you try some ice cream and let me know how you go. Ask any questions that you want to ask. If you've watched me live, you can 
say a little thumbs up or a heart or a wave, whatever it is, so I know who was watching me. And if you watch it in replay, I like to know that too. And if you're one of my YouTube followers, then feel free to do a thumbs up, down, whatever, and a comment or questions. I'm always happy to answer whatever I can. All right, have a lovely day, everybody, and I'll see you again. Bye for now.